Hello and welcome to part two of this tutorial where I'll guide you through the process of drawing Dave, my Ryland sheet with coloured pencils on pastel mat. So today I'll be starting the delicate fleece on the side of his face and over his eyes. A little later in the video I'll explain my technique for sketching areas of the fleece freehand and I'll explain my blending techniques for achieving a soft delicate fleece. So if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell before you leave so you receive a notification when a new video goes live each week. If you like the video remember to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you like it and I'll also know to make more tutorials like this. If you have any questions or feedback leave a comment and I'll come back to you as soon as I can and all that's left for me to say is I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. So I'm taking a new girl from the Polychromos range and I'm just going to start to plot in, almost sort of plot in, um, very lightly uh, because we're going to want to add colour into here. This is just a, a sort of neutral colour so that I can see where I'm going with the, um, with the fur, but very sort of lightly plot in some of these so they're effectively the, the the bits that are down in the creases of his um of his fleece but i'm just going to uh, draw some in and the way that i do this i mean obviously i have put some on the the reference photograph but otherwise i as i'm doing now i'm just sort of looking i'm finding an area on the screen that I'm looking at, the reference photograph. And I'm just keeping my pencil sort of on the page really um, and following my eyes around the screen without sort of looking. I am, I am certainly looking at my piece of paper every now and again. But it means that I can just sort of follow roughly. I mean, these don't have to be anywhere near perfect really they're just sort of suggestions of the of the coat so it means that I can just follow my eyes around the screen and basically the pencil works the pencil follows my eyes so when my eyes are going on the screen the pencil sort of moving um, at the same time and in the same direction on the uh, the paper if that makes sense I'm going to use the raw umber as sort of the base coat for the for the fleece here on the face. So I'm just very gently with circular motions covering over this area. I'm taking a light bronze from the Derwent Light Fast range. Uh, it's very similar to the raw umber, so if you don't have uh, any Derwent light fast, then the raw umber would sort of work for you. The, the difference with the light bron bronze is that it has ever such um, more of like a, a greeny um, undertone to it, whereas the, uh, the raw umber is a bit more sort of yellow and this one's a little bit more green. So I'm just going to very very gently go around some of those darker areas to effectively sort of pull the edge of the the crease out so we're obviously going to put a darker bit in there to show that crease so I'm just going to go around these areas that we've already plotted and just start to soften them with this light bronze And I'm just working on this face area for the minute. And adding a few more bits as I see them. So again, I'm just taking my eyes around, around the area. And just softening down these uh, sort of the bits that are going to become the creases of the of the fleece. 
and it's just a case of building this fleece up a little bit at a time it really is like a, a jigsaw we're just sort of finding one little bit of you know a clump of fleece and then moving on to the next bit. and the way that works for me is to plot the darker bits first uh, so I can see there's something coming to the edge of that mouth there so let's pop that one in I didn't put that one in And for this sort of fur, the texture of the pastel mat actually works uh, really well because the fleece itself sort of looks uh, quite grainy when you look at it on the photograph. So it works really well with the um, with the pastel mat. It's a good it's a good um, sort of surface to draw a fleece like this on. I think this would, in my opinion, be a lot harder. Not necessarily harder, but it would take much longer to to draw um on the artistico so you know there are certain sorts of um drawings of, that sort of suit different surfaces better than others and this pastel mat is definitely one that suits uh, a fleece i think a, a sheep fleece so now that i've added that light bronze i just want to very gently blend that out again not pressing on sort of too hard with this paintbrush I don't want to brush it away and I don't want to make it look flat I just want to soften it and sometimes um, I may use a cotton bud to soften the pencil on pastel mat because the cotton bud uh, in my opinion it sort of gives you more of a harsh result um, much easier to just wash the or dust the, the the pencil away but it also sort of gives more of a harsh result and I want to keep this really soft here I don't want that harsh result here the the um the portrait's just too small uh it's got to stay sort of delicate for me I want to keep it delicate and I'm just brushing down here because it I can see that it sort of comes down in this direction so when I uh I, I put a donkey um I did a, drew a donkey with pastel mat and put that on YouTube, I think around Christmas time actually. Um, and I did use the cotton bud um, on that one because it was just, it could cope with a more sort of harsher blend. The whole coat was harsher, if that makes sense. And this is a lot more sort of subtle. Um, so if you haven't seen the donkey video and you fancy going to uh, check out the donkey video, I'll link that one at the end. Um, of the video and then you can go and see the, the donkey and pastel mat as well and you'll see how I use the cotton bud to blend because it um, it could just sort of cope with a harsher uh, blend if that makes sense I'm just using the kneadable eraser to just dab this little area here uh, I'm just dabbing some of these dark bits to just knock them back a little bit and then I want to use a, a warm grey wand to just blend this out a little bit more sort of blend it and desaturate it actually at the same time just adding this bit of warm grey wand over the top of it just uh, knocks the colour back and desaturates it With a sharp warm grey four, I'm going to start to think about these little marks now that are going off in all directions on his nose actually. And these really are going in all sorts of directions, but they are 
coming over this way so we want to make sure that they're coming over Use a little bit of the olive brown 10% up here to blend into this, this nose up here. And around here. And then blend it out a little bit with the the warm grey too from the polychromos range. And also make sure this is blended out with the, uh, the cold grey one as well. And the reason I'm going to do this is because in a minute I'm going to use the slice tool to just add a little bit more detail here but I don't want to have to blend that after I've used the slice tool so I'm going to use the, uh, do the blending first. So once I've got some sort of base areas into uh, this cheek, I'm going to take my kneadable eraser and I'm making it into uh, almost like a little uh, point on the end so that I can start to dab off. And I'm looking at the reference photograph again because I want to dab off uh, sort of in the lighter areas on the reference photograph where the almost like the top of the fleece would be so the bit that would be closer to you if you were next to him and I want to dab that off and it is sort of dabbing rather than brushing it is dabbing and the reason it's dabbing is because um, it just gives you uh, the end of the eraser gives you a nice um, almost the right sort of size as the the fleece actually so so actually that I should have probably said that you want to roll it into the right sort of size for your uh, little bits of fleece however big you're doing your drawing and then dab it off and it's going to create the top of that fleece for you so it does obviously pick up the pencil off the pastel mat so you have to keep uh, sort of changing it around and making sure that you've got a clean area because if you get uh, if you pick up too much pencil on the end of your eraser it just stops then picking up more pencil it just stops working so if you change it around and keep sort of coming up with a clean part on the end it'll pick up the the pastel mat much better for you And, you know, you won't necessarily do this once. You may do this more than once, but every time you do it, it will just add a little bit more depth to the fleece and give you something else to work with. I'm going to do some little bits down here as well, because this is where he, his fleece is sort of transitioning into the muzzle. And it's super at sort of creating the texture that you want. Okay. And then what I'm going to do very gently is with a warm grey uh, five, I'm just going to put the tiniest little bits of um, sort of darker areas in there to make it look like it really is sort of going down into the uh, fleece but we're just talking tiny tiny little areas this is obviously quite dark down here under here. And if you do find that you have 
overdone it a little bit, well, you can just sort of take it back off. You just dab it back off or you can blend it. Um, you know, it's just a case of uh, getting something that looks balanced between the darker bits and the, uh, the lighter bits and have it look, um, you know, you want it to look quite subtle. I'm just going to take an eraser and I'm just going to drag it along that line actually to soften that line because I really don't want a, a harsh line there. So I'm just softening it across the top of his head or across the top of his nose. And then once I've done that, I'm taking a titanium, uh, a buff titanium from the uh, the luminance range and I'm just going to go, because I've, I've obviously use that eraser to pick up some highlights. I'm just going to blend those out now and just put a little bit of colour on those highlights because obviously those highlights aren't really, not not highlights as such, but sort of like the tops of the fleece, they're not really that uh, white. So I just want to blend it all together now with the buff titanium. And I'm just using little circular motions. And this is all that this fleece needs really, little circular motions. So in that respect, it's probably sort of like one of the easier uh, fleeces to create, I think, because you don't really have to worry about, um, you know, are your little strokes going in the right direction? It's just little circular bits. Obviously, these uh, darker areas need to sort of, you know, be in the right sort of area. And I'm just going to blend this buff titanium over to his muzzle as well, because that's sort of creamy as well. And that buff titanium just uh, blends it out nicely. And it may be that we go back and add a little bit of sort of depth here. But I want to make sure that I do more of it first. Before I start making this really heavy, I want to sort of, you know, have a look at it in context with the rest of it. So I'll leave that for the minute. It may be that I go back to that. But what I want to do now is to take a cold grey two, take out some of this pencil up here so you can't see the the pencil lines and I'm just going to follow up to make sure that I'm in the right sort of place so I'm not going to sort of trust these uh, these lines I want to make sure on the reference photograph I can see from the eyelid coming up at that sort of angle this is where his head goes from coming down his nose and starts to sort of, you know, go up and over his head. So that's where I'm going to put this grey. I can see a nice sort of grey bit. And as I say, it's coming up at an angle from his, uh, from his eye. So I'm going to position it there and have it coming down. Yeah. And I will sort of check these. That's how I do check that my... I, I call them landmarks, but my landmarks are in the right sort of place. Um, I sort of check against, you know, perhaps the eye or the nose or the ear or um, something like that. And that goes all the way up to there. So that's sort of again going up at that angle. So between sort of that angle and that angle, that's where this darker grey is. So hopefully you can see that, especially if you look at the reference photograph, hopefully you'll be you'll be able to see that. Um, but this will sort of help me keep the curls. Um, they're not really curls, but you know, the bits of fleece in the right sort of place. So I'm just going to work on this area here for the minute. So I'm going back to my nougat again, and I'm just going to come down. And again, I'm holding it quite far back. I don't want to, I don't want to hold it sort of upright as you'd hold a pen, because otherwise it's all going to get quite tight. I want this to be really sort of loose. And this holding the pencil back just works really well um, with the pastel mat. But secondly, for this particular uh, type of fleece that, you know, is all sort of really fuzzy and um, more sort of shapes and tones rather than uh, lots of sort of detail in the fleece, if that, that makes sense. So I'm going back up to this grey bit and I can see that the dark bit comes down there. So I'm just going to plot it and it may not be, I may not have it in the right place. I may have to change it, um, but you know, it won't be that difficult if I've got it in the wrong place as I'm sketching this out. 
it won't matter. I can, I'll be able to change it. I'm just putting little bits in that I recognise as little bits to sort of plot. This is coming round the eye, so I know that that's there and that's getting quite dark in there. And this actually comes down and meets the edge of the eye here. Um, that comes up there and then there's obviously a darker bit. And I mean, I'm just sort of plotting it. It doesn't really matter if this isn't an exact, in fact, it isn't going to be an exact copy of the, the photograph. I'm not necessarily looking for it to be an exact copy, but I'm using these little bits as a guide um, to sort of show me which direction the, the fleece is going in as well, actually. But back up to here, I can see that there's little bits uh, coming round here. And if I get lost, so I've sort of just got lost there now. I've, I've lost my way because when you look at a fleece on a, a picture or something, sometimes you can go a bit blind. So I've lost my way there. So rather than making it up, I'm going to go back to here because I knew that I had my way. Um, I knew that I, I could understand this bit down here. I knew which direction I was going in. So I'm going to go back to here. And then I'm going to start to come up from this way. And I can see now where I should have been up here, but I'd lost my way a little bit there. So by going to another area of the uh, portrait, I can sort of go back and rework out where I was and, you know, take it from there. And just sort of build it up tiny little bit by bit. So I know there's some brown... Uh, right up on the top there. I know that the, that was this bit coming down. And like I say, I'm not looking to get this right, but I do want to pay attention to the reference photograph. I don't want to completely make it up because I want to make sure that these uh, sort of uh, bits of fleece are all going in the right direction. the right sort of direction so I'll leave it there for the minute like that that's the dark bit let's go back to some of the olive brown now and I'm just going to start to add a little because I know these darker bits are where the the fleece is really sort of going down towards the skin so we're going down into the fleece so I know that there's also going to be some darker bits there because that's the bit that's going down into the fleece. So I know that I can start to put this, this olive brown colour next to that nougat. And it's going to help me build up some depth into that fleece. So I'm going back in with the raw umber again to just blend out this little bit of uh, nougat that I've put down and this is quite a dark heavy area actually um, around here this is this is quite uh, quite dark I know that this is quite dark on the side of the eye going back in with that light bronze again from the Derwent light fast range to just blend that in It's quite dark in there and I can see there's a bit of grey in there actually so let's just pop a bit of grey in. Again I'm keeping it really um, light, I don't want to overpower it with, I don't want any of these sort of dark colours to be overpowered so even though I'm saying they're sort of like a dark colour and they're right down deep into the fleece, I don't want to, I don't want to really overpower it or I'm going to lose that sort of delicate um, fleece that I want because I want to keep it sort of soft and uh, fuzzy so I'm just going to go and again I've started on this little bit here and then I can see other darker bits actually sort of right right sort of down um, into the fleeces we've got another bit in front coming over the top uh, you can see that that's darker at the back so it really is just a case of building it up a little bit at a time and the browns and the sort of ochre colours the creams the greens and the greys they're going to do exactly uh, what we want really 
to create the fleece. I'm just going to take that little bit back out because as I was just demonstrating that, I put a bit too much back into that. Take that out, I don't want that like that. And I'm just putting a bit of bister in um, round here to add a little bit more brown, but I don't want it to get really sort of dark and overpowering. So uh, bist is quite a good choice for me here. And it's just a case of working on your uh, little dark bits. Um, you won't, you, you certainly won't sort of put the same marks down as me because it will depend how sort of light or heavier your marks were to, were to start with as to how much you need to sort of keep going over them to, um, to get the depth you want. You're just looking for a nice sort of... Um, balance between the dark bits, the bits that are going all the way down into the fur and those lighter bits. So, you know, it may be that you're finished this area before uh, me. We all sort of put our marks down differently. So you'll just have to have a look at it, judge it and, you know, you'll be able to sort of work out how long you need to take on um, an area or, you know, sort of how many layers you need to put down. I'm not actually putting that many uh, layers down here because I want to keep it nice and subtle. So I'm, start, I'm going to start to blend this with the, the paintbrush again, just very gently uh, blending this together and pushing this around, blending out that bit that I put a bit too much grey on earlier. So I don't want to completely sort of go over everything with the paintbrush because otherwise I'm just going to push all of this darker colour into um, the lighter colour and just sort of, you know, lose that uh, depth that we're starting to build up already. So I'm sort of working around the darker bits and blending those colours together and then pushing it out towards the lighter areas. But I don't want to... I don't want to join all the areas up, if that makes sense. I don't want to join all of the dark areas up with the lighter areas, or I'm just going to flatten it all and it will, you know, I'll have to sort of start again at building the depth. But this is building depth for us. I'm blending out, sort of softening down that darker area, which is going to give us the impression of the, uh, the fleece going all the way sort of down to his skin. And blending like this, it does help sort of push it into the grain a little bit. It helps to push the uh, the pencil into the grain a bit. I'm not worried about all this pencil up here. I'll get rid of that in a second. But it just helps to sort of push it around. And then from there, what I want to do is I just want to take that warm grey too again, and very gently with circular motions, and perhaps pull it down a little bit. So I will, I want to use circular motions here because I want to pull it down into this this bit over his eye. So let's pull that in. But then out here again, I'm just going to very gently with that sort of chisel tip, I've got, I've got a chisel tip um, on the end or at least a chisel tip that's starting. And I'm just going to blend that pencil quite far back again, um, sorry, holding the pencil quite far back again, so I can't put the pressure down on the pencil. Just want to, blend, let's blend that little bit out as well actually. So I'm just using this pencil to, this warm grey to, to just sort of blend the darker areas together and also add a little bit of colour onto these, these light tones where we're actually sat right on top of the uh, the fleece because these these lighter areas on top of the fleece they're, they're obviously not white there's quite a lot of color in them so this warm gray too is just great for sort of bringing those that dark and that light together and one thing we have got before I go and use the eraser again I can see that this is actually a bit darker here so I'm going to add a little bit of uh, dark here a 
and out. And just blend that side of the eye with a, a warm grey three. We've got a little bit of detail in there and I just want to blend that because that's a bit darker on that side than it is on this side on the uh, reference photograph. So I'm taking the kneadable eraser again and where I can see a, a light a bit on the reference photograph, I'm dabbing off to create these tips on this, this fleece again. Keep changing the eraser around again to make sure I'm using a, um, a clean bit and it will just pick up the pigment so much better if you've got a clean bit, obviously because it's, it's more sort of tacky. And like I say, we may not, uh, you know, we may do this more than once, um, but each time we do it, um, if when we put pigment back down, it's not sort of like going backwards, it's just sort of like building the next layer. So, you know, we may need to put pigment down, we may need to do it again. Wherever I can sort of see a, a tuft on the top of his, uh, his fur, just dab it on. I'm just going to use a warm grey one round here actually because I've realised I've left that quite uh, light and I don't want to. This is this has got colour in it here. Let's tone that down. I'm going to go in with that warm grey four again to add little bits where I can sort of see it's really uh, dark. So don't I don't want to go too heavy with this, or I'm going to make it all, um, you know, really heavy. Like I said last time, I don't want to do that. But I can just see little bits every now and again. And you've got to think of it like think of it like drawing fluffy clouds. He is just like uh, lots of fluffy clouds and very soft. He's got a lovely soft uh, fleece. So I'm going to just add a little darker bit there because I can see that's quite dark there, and it's not just um, grey actually. So I'm going to go back to the uh, the new girl for that as well to just tone down that grey a little bit. So these darker bits are always going to be at the bottom of um, these um, these sort of darker shapes that we're working on because of course they're going to be right the way down to sort of give the impression that we're sort of building layers of his fur. I just want to soften and I'm literally just dabbing. I just want to dab and soften those. I'm going to use the buff to tame in a minute actually, but where this is greyer over here, I want to use a steel grey. I don't want to uh, blend that with the buff titanium because of course the buff titanium is like a creamy colour and this isn't, this is definitely a bluey colour over here. So I'm just going to blend that. Let's use the Van Dyke brown there because that looks quite brown up there. And then as this transitions into the sort of yellowy green colour again, I'm going to use the raw umber on this side to blend there is blue up there. The grey areas that we've put in, I just wanted to, to just wanted to uh, give them a little bit of a tint with um, a little bit of the Van Dyke brown so that it's not so grey. And then once again, I'm going to go over with the buff titanium and just blend everything together. But at the same time, we're colouring those. Um, those much lighter areas that are on top of the on top of the the uh, the fleece, I'm using circular motions again, and I don't even mind if you know some of the grain shows on the pastel mat. It all helps with this overall feel of the fleece. Some of these areas, you can see that even though they're sort of uh, browns and ochres. There is most definitely a tint of green and we've been using um, the olive brown 10% to you know, create some of these areas. But now I want to actually go in with the olive brown, which 
as the name suggests, is quite a a greeny. It's a lovely colour. It's like a, a sort of really earthy, uh, greeny um, tone. And what I want to do is almost almost like I'm putting a bit of a glaze on, really, just very gently dusting that olive brown, which is a sort of greeny colour, over the areas and it really is um, a dusting. If you look at how much I'm actually sort of putting on, if I put that down there, if you can see that, this is the extent of the colour. That is sort of how hard I'm pressing. And that is the extent of what I'm putting on. You can see that there's hardly anything on there, but it's just giving a dusting. It's just giving a, a glaze of this sort of, uh, green and that's really going to help with the uh, the overall look of the coat to add this lovely sort of earthiness into it so I can use it I, I'm not going to necessarily use it on the real sort of light bits but I can use it in the dark areas and I can even drag it out to what you know we would call the mid-tones um, I don't want to obviously go over the lighter areas because I want to keep those light and this is quite a dark colour but I can certainly uh, you know use it in the darker areas and uh, drag it about a little bit and it's quite good it's quite useful as well for sort of breaking up some of these uh, lighter areas that I may have sort of made a little bit big and I can just uh, break those up so that works and I just wanted to put a highlight in there. I wanted to put a highlight because first of all there is a little clump of fur there that I've just seen and I just quite like so I want to put it there but secondly that little highlight there which represents sort of like the top of a bit of a fleece the top of an area of fleece um, it just is nice at taking your eye around um, the top of his head there so that was another reason I wanted to uh, put that in it just sort of sits nicely in the um, sits nicely in that curve um, so I just, yeah just wanted to put that bit in just create that nice little curve there and the thing is I enjoy this so much I could just get carried away with this for, for goodness knows how long <laughs> I do actually um, I do quite enjoy it Probably spend far too long on it, but never mind. I just want to create some texture in this little bit here because I've just looked at it and thought, actually, that looks a bit sort of plain there and there would be texture there. So I'm just taking the raw umber and just adding a little bit, a little bit of texture there just to break that up a little bit. It was just a space that was just a little bit too sort of solid in colour for me. I wanted to break it up. Okay. And there is a chance at the end that I'll probably go in and, you know, dot a few more little um, bits in with the eraser anyway. So I'll leave that there for the minute. Um, I might go in and sort of dot a few more bits around afterwards, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I think that this is a good place to leave this part of the video here. I hope you've liked the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you have. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell before you leave if you want a notification when each new video goes live every week. So all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye-bye.